good. Uh, so I will share with you some agenda so that you will see what we are going to do right now. So do you see my screen? Okay, good. Great, so today we will discuss specifics of life in Finland through the eyes of a foreigner. And uh, of course, there will be some a bit of presentation, uh, but mostly we will use a free discussion and we would like really to get some feedback from you and to hear also your opinion. And uh, our agenda is the following. So there will be some brief introduction to the topics. Uh, uh, what we are doing right now, uh, then there will be a presentation of our company, a very brief presentation and our services. So what we are doing, who we are, uh, then we will tell you a bit about uh, how we moved to Finland for work and studies and what difficulties we faced with and what were the cultural differences. Uh, then, of course, then I will, as a little bonus, I will tell you about the most demanded specialities in Finland. And finally, uh, we will uh, we will tell you about some interesting facts about in Finland that you cannot read in the books. And uh, so if you have any questions, you can just raise your hand and um, uh, during the discussion so that we will re re reply to you as soon as possible. But also uh, remember that in the end of our discussion of our webinar, that will be questions and answers section so that you will be, will be able to discuss some pressing topics with you. And uh, yeah, a brief presentation of the company. So our company is called Shellcode. I know that some people of you came from Sweden and probably you know what it means. So uh, it's not a Finnish name, it's uh, it's in Swedish. Uh, Svetislav or Slava, he will tell a bit more about why is it in Swedish while we're in Finland. So Shellcode uh, is an IT consulting company and it means a source code. And the company is quite a young one, so it was founded in 2018 uh, by Vyacheslav Sobolev and Janina Sobolev. And among our activities, we can point out IT consulting, also outsourced projects, uh, employees leading and IT recruitment services. And we are also dealing with IT training, including courses and webinars on, on C, C++, Bash, Python, and as well as free courses for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, so we are also dealing with some volunteering and um, our mission is to implement IT pro projects in the most successful way and uh, to provide also effective and successful IT staff recruitment and training. Uh, besides, we think that our priority is to create a comfortable workplace uh, for the employee and study conditions for our students. And uh, what is our vision? Of course, we want to become a company for people which provides educational support for refugees and uh, which is a desirable workplace for employees and a good client for partners. Uh, and um, our core values are quite simple. So we really value professionalism and we have like really highly educated uh, and skilled professionals. In our company, also we value quality. We are very flexible, both with our students, so with the people we help to on a voluntary basis, uh, also with our clients. Uh, we also use human-centric approach, and we support our uh, our employees and students. Uh, we also value safety, care and comfort, and also we really value equality. So it doesn't matter. Uh, what religion you are, what nationality you are, what's, what is your gender or sex orientation. We really appreciate you as a good people and uh, as good professionals. Uh, yes, and meet our management team. Uh, here you can see Vyacheslav Sobolev. He's a uh, master of science and he's a co-founder and uh, chief uh, technology officer. And you also can write down his contacts here because he is one of the of those people who are responsible for, for IT courses. So once you want to learn some C and C++, so he is the right person to contact. But we will talk about it a bit later. Here is Janina Sobolevá. Uh, she's a co-founder and business process designer and she's a really like magnificent person and she's absolutely dedicated to volunteering and she's been like 
going to Poland to pick some refugees and she's like a fantastic person and a very creative one and here you can see her contacts so if it's something about volunteering social support here is Janina for you and here I am Alena Demeika and I'm a project director responsible for projects coordination and communication for recruitment sales and marketing it looks a bit uh, a lot but well I manage and as I like working especially working for Shellcode and here are my contact dates so if you want to deal with me concerning the future cooperation or study courses or whatever you just contact me via email yeah so now talking about uh, how we moved to Finland and for work and studies so we can we can discuss some difficulties and cu cultural differences we faced with so I've just pointed out some some things that really uh, made impression and uh, that were important for us and the first difficulties were language isolation cultural improve uh, cultural differences and social disintegration and uh, there is also a very interesting point everyone knows everything but you know nothing really uh, the weather was a bit challenging and but what were the opportunities I think also Slava can tell a bit about how he moved to Finland and what the first difficulties were so there are some uh, subtopics just to remind us what we are talking about Yes, but I, th I think we can just, yeah, do it like this. Mm -hmm. Which is that? Well, uh, to be start with our move to Finland, we moved here just by pure accident. Okay. We tried to find uh, some place where we can go to for multiple years, and uh, it happened just so that Nokia was recruiting a lot of people. So I came here first to be consultant at Nokia. And well, yes, we we felt uh, a, a lot of difference with our previous. Uh, with the places where we live in previously and the Finland. Uh, some of them can be noticed very quickly and some of them come to understand quite later. Uh, one is, uh, is uh, this called social distance between people that uh, people are not contacting each other as often as it happens in other places, like if you go to Italy, it's probably, probably just an opposite. The people are talking with everyone all the time, but not here, no. And uh, maybe the newcomer may feel himself isolated because of that. And it, it may create a feeling that uh, you are not welcome here, but that's not true. It's just a normal situation how people are living here. You don't see much people on the streets, e even in, in the Helsinki. May maybe only in a very city center, like one by one kilometer, you can see much people on the streets, but not anywhere, anywhere else. And language, well, 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 language is a difficult one. It's hard to study. It's not similar to anything what I know. And uh, of course, everything is in Finnish language everywhere. So even going to the grocery, first uh, attempt to buy something from the grocery store, it's a challenge because everything is labeled with the F Finnish name and you need then you need to understand where is the price for tomato and where is the price for lemon it, it's not that easy <laughs> well Alena maybe you can have some uh, memories from your first uh, time when you came to Finland yes of course
do you hear me <laughs> good so yeah i felt absolutely isolated it's been like really hard time for me because i didn't know the language and i'm still in the process of learning so i can't say that finnish language is a the easiest language to learn really but we will talk about it a bit later because well there is an opportunity to also to learn english and to speak english here and uh, but nevertheless i felt absolutely isolated i didn't know finnish and i i, I started uh, i had to search for a new job so all my all my career all my education it just uh, was left in the past and i felt like you know absolute social disintegration i felt like you know the pensioner who goes to the pension and doesn't know who he is and starts the life from the scratch so uh, really i felt like abandoned i felt depressed etc because in my case i didn't move to finland for work and studies i i, I my reason was a marriage so that's why I had to also search for the job. And that's why I can tell you quite a lot about searching for the job and how to apply, et cetera, et cetera. But in this webinar, I will just point out some of the issues. And yeah, I remember just sending dozens of CVs and uh, I took advice from my friends, from the colleagues, like what to do and how to how to get the first workplace in Finland and what to do with that. Because previously I've been working for Belarusian and Polish companies. And of course, my my job uh, career wasn't related to finland and as it turned out it's quite uh, important that you have something to in finland like something to start with so that was that was really difficult for me but later on uh by the way it started when i got my first workplace and uh then i also got my language courses and then this real integration into the culture also into the culture of uh, the same people who just moved of the immigrants uh, so from since then my my real integration started because i i started finding new friends uh, on my language courses in my company among the colleagues and then then it all began and then it turned out that gosh there's so many opportunities i can go for free to so many museums i can uh, go to the language cafeteriums also for free by the way i can go to the to the parks i can travel around finland and uh, there are so many things to do so yeah so really i would say that there are opportunities but they start as soon as you just leave your room and you are involved in something like in some courses in some activities you start learning language you start uh, actively searching for the job and you just you just find your people let's say find your identity then and, and then it all begins yeah uh yeah, we don't have raise in hands, but once you have anything to add on this stage, you can just raise your hand, click here. Yeah, you can see it's on the bottom. And yeah, so, or write a comment. If nothing to add, then we can continue and I, I can tell you a bit about the jobs in Finland. Well, um, maybe a couple things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, there is such a effect what we call uh, everyone knows everything it, it is not that people really know everything but it is that everyone believes that everybody else already knows everything and nobody will give explanations unless you ask for it and for example, it even costed me some amount of money because I was slow to understand rules in the public transportation in Helsinki. So before moving to Finland, I used it to think that every time when you change from bus to subway or to tram or even between different buses, you have to buy a new ticket. And this is not the case in, in Helsinki. You buy a single ticket, which is valid for something like one hour, and you can freely change a, to any public transport with the same ticket. You don't need to pay two times when you just move around the city. And it took me a few days to realize that. And of course, uh, my colleagues were a great help for me at my first workplace. They 
For example, they gave me a practical course how to use ATM because even uh, my bank uh, account was set such way that ATM was uh, showing me showing me Finnish language. So getting cash from it, it was impossible for few first few days. So yes, moving here creates a lot of uh, challenges, but also it is exciting. It, uh, when you overcome this and when you start to get to the new opportunities, it is truly rewarding. We spent here multiple years and we still don't pl plan to move anywhere else. Okay, so about now i will tell you a bit more about the job market and uh let's oh, let's continue the presentation uh yeah so um once you want to move to finland uh you should uh, you should know about the salaries here and about the most demanded specialities here so uh here you can see the nurses so they are really in demand and uh also, there are medical assistants, uh, and uh, yeah, you can see. So, in software development, developers are in the top three. So, with uh, with with average income of, of forty one thousand nine hundred thirty five, but it's an average income, and uh, really, there are almost no limits for programmers. Uh, also, on their uh, fourth position there is social work and teachers uh, with 24 euro per hour then there are uh, early childhood educators uh, but uh, although for instance early childhood educators they earn only 13 euro per hour uh, nevertheless uh, they have like bonuses and benefits like 400 euro additionally uh, also, they are dentists, and you can see they earn quite a lot, and they are also dentist assistants that earn a bit a, a bit less, but nevertheless, it's quite a demanding um, profession. Uh, and uh, then there are psychologists uh, who earn, uh, in average, 30 euro per hour, speech pathologists, uh, shop sales assistants, uh, and uh, kitchen helpers and cleaners, uh, they close our top 10 ranking here. Uh, yeah, and uh, talking about the IT, uh, because as we are the IT company, uh, oh, you can Alina, see, yeah. May I interrupt you for, for a second? Yeah. Please come to the previous yeah. slide. Yeah. Uh, here, for the software development, the salary is per year, mm -hmm. and it translates approximately to 23 euro per hour. Yeah. But this is truly the average. Like if you take all the young guys who just left university and the senior specialists who spent many years in the industry, then the average will be like this. But uh, with the years and uh, at work, uh, the salary actually is increasing. So th this is, um, you can expect to get more after years spent in Finland. The starting salary might be not like exciting as you can think about Switzerland, for example. But still, after some efforts, you will get more. Uh, yeah, here you can see uh, something about the IT and, uh, te and the technological uh, sphere in, uh, in Finland. So worldwide, it's uh, Finland takes the certain place uh, for the technology. And also we see that programming and software development is uh, the third most in demand profession in Finland. So even uh, even kindergarten, uh, so we have like so many talks in the news about like kindergarten staff, cleaners that are needed. But anyway, you can see that uh, IT specialities are even more in demand than uh, kindergarten teachers and uh, and uh, and also cleaners and uh, uh, kitchen staff. Yes, and uh, here uh, we can also uh, talk about. Uh, about our future webinars and courses. Uh, yeah, for the future webinar, we wanted to offer some interesting topics. Uh, there will be a poll for you. 
uh, but uh, firstly you can see it's uh, it's uh, it's some advertisements but we want some free webinar for you to offer and once you have a family or you want uh, to move with your family to Finland or you want to learn a bit more about educational system in Finland it will be for free uh, but anyway uh, now we would like you to participate in the poll and tell which topic uh, about Finland, about life in Finland, it's maybe it's taxation, maybe it's medical system, will be most, more interesting for you so that we can later on after this poll decide and have a, have a, have a nice solution for the next free webinar. Of course, we are also planning some, some, some webinars that are not for free, but it will come in the future. Uh, and uh, those people who participate in uh, in our free webinars, they or even in one free webinar, they will get a ten percent discount. Uh, also, there will be a very cool group discount. So once you bring friends, but it's just for the future. Now we have free webinars; they are free for everyone. And now let's choose the topic for the for the next webinar. So you can rather agree whether you would like to hear more about families with children, how to move to Finland. If you have a family or if you have a spouse if you have children also and what is it uh, what does the educational system in finland look like yeah so just wait for a while and you will have an opportunity to participate in the poll but i will meanwhile show you how to make it so the poll will aha uh -huh. Yeah, I will. I will read a bit more. I can. I can see the message uh, from. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I've got some qu nice questions from Sri, and I. I think I will reply. Uh, we will reply to this question like yeah, personally. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, here you can see where to find this poll. So it will appear uh, on the on the right side of your screen. And uh, you will just uh, press on the activities, this triangle, square, and round signs. And here you will you will find the poll, and you will you can vote for the next topics for the webinars. Yeah, and uh, while our poll is coming, I can also advertise you some some IT courses that are also coming. Uh, yes, here you can see. Uh, uh, we want to provide some uh, programming language, uh, some uh, advanced level courses for C and C++. Uh, also, we are considering courses for Bash, uh, like advanced level for Bash, and also uh, beginning level for Python, but they are in the progress, so now we are thinking about it. Uh, but nevertheless, um, yeah, now we would like to advertise also our courses for C and C++. It will be advanced level for those who have been dealing with programming, who needs to go to the a senior position, for instance. And uh, yeah, our courses, our course will last for 12 hours uh, within three months. And uh, here you can see the prices. And of course, those who participated in this first webinar or who will who would like to participate in more webinars they get more and more discounts and also their group discounts and here you can see our tutor it's uh, Vyacheslav Sobolev uh, so he is uh, one of the tutors oh sorry for that uh, and he will be also responsible person to contact yes and uh, the start date of our courses for C and C++ advanced level uh, is approximately on May 7th and uh, later on in the end of webinar we will also make a poll for you asking what date and time if you are interested of course in the courses can be interesting for you but if you're not interested in the course so you can just uh, write it in the in the chat box and say okay I'm not interested then we can just skip that poll for you uh, yeah so how, how is our poll is it yeah, you can you can see the screen. So a new poll has been added. So just go here, activities, polls, and here you can you can give your vote, give your voice here, and vote. Yeah, I think I will I will stop sharing the screen because I would like to vote too.
Okay, has any everyone voted? Okay, good. So here we can see the results of our voting. I can also share the screen for you. Yeah. And here you can see that um, relocation services uh, got one vote and uh, how to launch a business in Finland difficulties and opportunities got two votes. So great, it's, it's a good thing to think about uh, in the future and uh, yeah I will show the results to you so you can see it so majority of the votes went to how to launch a business in Finland difficulties and opportunities good so we can start thinking about making this webinar for you and remember that some webinars will be free and some webinars they will dem demand some very small amount of money but as you've participated in the first webinar you will get good discounts uh, yes, and now we can just start our free and nice discussion about, about life in Finland and some interesting facts about Finland. And once you have questions or something to add, you just raise your hand and we will reply as soon as possible. So the first part is, uh, we've already mentioned it, it's everyone knows everything. And uh, Vichislav, do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have one more story. Uh, in this, uh, probably uh, also the uh, fact how it reflects this mood, that everyone knows everything, that people tend to not send a complaint, even if it is a good idea. Like, once uh, Helsinki subway was uh, installing advertising system on the trains. So during the journey, they wanted to show passengers some advertising inside the subway train. And at the first uh, version of hardware, what they installed there had a serious problem. It was creating noise and it was quite huge discomfort. Uh, for, for the passengers. So traveling inside such train was uh, difficult. Uh, at some point, we were even uh, memorizing numbers of uh, trains, that kind of a serial number, that what we should avoid when we travel to another part of a city. And uh, it was continuing for a few months. And you can think that uh, something roughly a million passengers per day coming there, and they didn't submit enough uh, information to the operator to get the, the uh, operator to fix this problem. Because, well, everybody believes that everybody else already knows. <laughs> so they don't bother to go and complain. Uh, yeah, I had also one more situation with everyone knows everything. When I moved to Finland, uh, there was a real challenge. Uh, you, you can hear me, right? Uh, there was a real challenge about this uh, Henkilo Korpi. It's so-called a personal ID card. I didn't know about its existence, really. And I would tell you more, the people who lived here, they've been living for a while, they didn't tell it about me and they didn't, they already forgot how to get it. So really I've been like searching around also like uh, uh, official or pages, official websites of these different like uh, migration office, uh, all of these social services, nobody told about this card and how to get it. So the first one I've got my first uh, bank account and I, when I've got my bank card, it turned out that I didn't, I didn't get these bank keys and bank uh, pin code or whatever. So I couldn't use any social services, anything like through the internet. I had to go physically to any office and it was really annoying. It was so difficult. And then I've been like searching around how to get rid of it because it turned out that my husband can just sit at, by sitting at home, can just book an appointment to the doctor or write a complaint or I don't know, do whatever he wants, uh, like submit a tax card and I could do nothing. I had to go somewhere, stand in the lines and wait for the, I just thought, oh my God, what a terrible bureaucracy is in Finland. But then it turned out that I just don't have ID cards. 
Yes, and uh, then I've been like looking everywhere. Like I found some a uh, chart. It's been like in Russian, and uh, I found it's been like then there was a way, the way how to how to how to make this uh, ID card. How you can go to the police, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's how I found out how to make it. And since that, my life became much easier. And I can't say about terrible bureaucracy in Finland anymore. Yeah, and let's talk about more facts. Once you have something to add, you can rather raise your hand or you can also just wait for the end of the webinar so we can discuss it. So yeah, one more thing that uh, really we pointed out was, was the high quality of water and food and also how eco-activists, how active they were, let's say. Uh, uh, there is a nice, uh, there is a funny thing now in the parliament because really uh, in Finland you can see the nature absolutely everywhere. You can see like hedgehogs coming to the front door of your house. You can see the foxes, you can see the rabbits. Oh gosh, rabbits are really there just everywhere. Uh, yeah, and uh, people, and there are so many dogs. So you really, if you're afraid of dogs, just be prepared that there will be dogs everywhere and they will not have muzzles on the faces and uh, uh, there will be some leash or uh, but no muzzles so just be prepared but they're really friendly nice dogs so for instance for me i was afraid of dogs i had bad experience in my childhood but step by step i got used to that and finnish people they really love they adore animals they treat them like children and they really treat they're really like you can see that for instance, the strawberry from Poland and strawberry from Finland, the strawberry from Finland will be at least twice more expensive than strawberry brought from somewhere, like, I don't know, from Spain or Poland or from, from ever else. So uh, these uh, Finnish products, they will cost more, that, but you will see the value. They will be ecologically clean, they will be tasty, they will be really good. And what concerns eco activists, for instance, now in the parliament, there are there is a discussion about the animals. Uh, you know, some animals they are killed for food, like cows, pigs, etc. And uh, for some moral reasons, uh, fiends they were killing these animals uh, while they were unconscious, so they couldn't feel anything, they couldn't understand, realize what was going on. Uh, but uh, some uh, people from Islamic culture, they started complaining that no, they should be killed in while they're conscious. It's not right. And now there is a real discussion in the parliament because on the one hand, you know, like their scales, on the one hand, it's about cultural differences and cultural equality. But on the other hand, it's about animals. It's about love to pets. And really this discussion, I don't know, I think it lasts for half a year at least. So it's still going. So we are like following the following this discussion. Uh, we just love, do you have anything to add or can we move forward? What do you think? Do we have any questions here or no? Uh, the one more thing to note is that it's not that great idea to wear clothes made of natural fur uh, in Finland. Because some eco activists they're really annoying and they can spread the pains uh, on, on this kind of clothes. So people really don't wear it at all. So yeah, that, that's uh, another part of uh, animal protection here. And okay. one more uh, discussion, well, that's probably more Eu Europe-wide than Finland, that uh, a while ago there was a new regulation about how much space should be provided to each chicken at farm. Also, it feels first a bit strange why governmental decision should be made about it. But in the end, uh, when it is implemented, uh, it even improves quality of food uh, and uh, it provides, well, a bit more comfort, comfort for animals at the farm. So that, in the end, it's not bad. Yeah, also I would like to add that also in Finnish shops you can see like this um, 
uh, milk, for instance, products where it's written that that milk was taken from the freely freely walking cows. So they have freedom to walk in the fields and that milk is more expensive and more valuable. Yeah, so that was also some, some kind of surprise for me. Okay, that cows are different. They're, 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 they're free cows. It's, it's really good. Yeah, and one more thing that we would like to mention is um, is some language thing. So once you speak English, you are really welcome to Finland, especially if you are in the IT, especially if you are in some uh, sales or marketing, because 70% of Finns, they speak English as a second language. So they speak English on a native level. Uh, and also here, I would like to add that many Finns, they like learning new languages. Really, it's, it's, it, it's so fascinating. I remember when I met my husband and it saw that uh, we've been uh, we've been uh, like comparing who knows ancient Greek better. But then it turned out that he speaks actually 11 languages and I don't know, OK, I screwed it. So, uh, yeah, but it was funny because Finns, uh, they are really into learning new languages. They think it's really good. It's interesting, especially if a Finnish person goes to uh, goes abroad he or she will definitely try to learn this language and maybe in the future uh, they will continue learning. So Finns, they are really into learning new languages and if you're an English speaker, you're really welcome to, to Finland. You will be well understood and there are also many people in the programming, for instance, who are living in Finland for ages and they speak English fluently and they speak rather non, no Finnish or they speak just a bit of Finnish because there is always temptation to switch into English. Uh, yeah, should we go forward or anything to add? Okay, let's go forward and there is one interesting issue about Scandinavian socialism. Have you ever heard of it? Just raise your hand if you have. Okay, let's see. Oh, you haven't. Okay, then we will tell you a bit about it. So it's Scandinavian socialism uh, uh, means it's it's closely connected with the social support. So you will get social support and uh, there are no homeless people because uh, if you become unemployed, you will get all possible social benefits. You will get uh, almost free accommodation. So you will pay just a bit i knew people who paid for instance just 100 euro for the accommodation while they were in some troubles uh, also while you are unemployed while, or if you are your income is not high enough uh you will not pay for your medicine and uh, not for your kindergarten so really there is so much social support so that uh sorry but you have no chance to be to become a homeless person you don't have a chance to starve or to be hungry or to die out of hunger uh, and uh, the social so socialism means also like equality and uh, it's not really typical for finnish culture to show off to show how cool you are and uh, buy some a lot of expensive items and i, I have a very good uh, uh explain a, a very good uh, uh, example of the social uh, social uh, socialism this Scandinavian socialism here you can see a very important person who is sitting uh, during the lecture in Turku on the stairs do you recognize this person now, first of all I would like to ask you who is this person uh, you can write it in the comments okay let's see okay uh you don't know uh okay i will give you some hint it's a president of finland try to find him okay okay you you did it you did it okay good 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 thanks Ronya. yes exactly here you can see the president of finland and he's just sitting on the stairs of the auditorium so it wasn't so that he he came here as a as um i don't know a very privileged person vip who needs uh, many many a lot of uh, security guys around he's just sitting as a normal guy like around normal people and i, I guess also uh Vitislav can add a bit more about president and uh, how it works in finland 
So, hard to add uh, anything, but uh, yeah, I remember that one of my colleagues, many, many years back, uh, one of colleagues in Finland said that uh, president who was about to leave her position at that moment uh, will be living uh, next to him in the, just in the next building in the Helsinki. And uh, all Russians who were around were laughing and asking, okay, have you seen bodyguards around? Did they set up some observation points on the roof? Maybe you can have seen somebody with a rifle walking, patrolling that street. But no, it's it's just a title. And then when president term is ended, it's just like a normal person living in the town. Not that nothing special is visible there. Uh, yeah, and also there is one very important point. Finns are introverts. Uh, they really respect all their boundaries and they also, but it doesn't mean that, oh my God, don't touch me. I don't like you. They also respect your boundaries. Uh, there are funny situations in their transport, public transport, uh, when you come for, to public transport and you can see that some people, many people, they prefer to stand instead of sitting because for instance, you know, there are usually like double seats. So once, if one seat is occupied, usually the second one will be empty. So they really keep distance between each other. And there were also funny jokes about Corona times when we had to keep distance. And there were like two meters, I guess, right? And Finns were like saying, oh my God, why is it so close? Like two meters was too close. Yeah, so really they're introverts, but it doesn't mean that they hate you. If they do not reply, if they kind of ignore you, it means that they respect your rights and they are really like listening to you and trying to figure out, is it correct time to come closer? Uh, but on the other hand, Finnish people, Finns are about volunteering and uh, how many percent is it about 70 or 80 percent of Finns who are involved in volunteering activities. So really, they like to help other people for free and uh, yeah it's not so that they're like they hate other people they just respect your boundaries so if you are very um if you are very extrovertic so finland can be a bit difficult for you but uh step by step you will uh, you will see how you have changed and that you became like ambivert so from extrovert to ambivert and then you will also see the difference in you yeah uh slava yeah First impression is the Finns are introverts, but uh, after you spend some years and after even you need to spend years in the same office with the same colleagues and you will see the change. You will notice that uh, they talk more. So it just takes time to get used to new people. And also there is uh, another good joke about Finland, which represents, I think, first impression, what foreigners think about Finns, that when you speak with the Finnish person, then introvert will look at his own shoes and extrovert will look at your shoes. And uh, I discussed this joke with my, multiple joke it's it also carries some truth <laughs> uh, yeah also probably you heard a lot about finnish weather oh my god it's so cold there it's not worth moving really it's not worth moving you can see some funny joke here in the screen i will make it uh bigger for you but really, it's a, it's a kind of myth, really, because uh, when we talk about Finnish weather, uh, yeah, it's colder than in, uh, in Central Europe, for instance. But if you compare it to St. Petersburg, for instance, or Belarus and Poland, where I came from, it's almost the same. 
maybe in uh, in Belarus and Poland, the winter starts a bit later, and it also the spring starts earlier. But in Finland, it takes a bit longer time for winter, and uh, and also it depends uh, which uh, region of Finland you move to. For instance, this Uusima or this uh, capital region is famous for being. Uh, with the more mild weather, the weather is really almost the same as, as in the rest of the Europe. So, uh, and uh, yes, by the way, this capital region, which is Helsinki, Espo, uh, Vanta, uh, it's also very famous for the number of, uh, of uh, immigrants. Uh, and also there are more people who speak English and there are much more jobs. So if you want to move to Finland, I would suggest you also to consider capital regions. Uh, Slava, anything to add about the weather? Mm. No. Okay, so we can move forward. So talking about the weather, we should also talk about depression. So really in Finland, uh, depression is one of the main issues that uh, medical doctors uh, think about. And uh, just to let you know, so this starting from the end of October until the February, there will be so so called this Pime Aika. So there will be a very dark time when it will become dark very early and the daytime will be something about the light. You will see the light for six hours maybe. Yeah, so it will be really dark. Uh, but for that, uh, there are so many ways that Finns, uh, they decided to improve the situation. So there are so-called depression lamps. So here you can see the example of this lamp. Uh, also, uh, these uh, just nurses, they can uh, prescribe the recipe for this uh, anti-depression uh, anti -depression pills for you. So really, there are so many ways Finns uh, get rid of this pimia aika or of this uh, dark time. They also go abroad. Uh, some people who have this uh, remote work, especially IT profession, so they just can go, for instance, to Spain or to some hot country and spend these several months there and just be happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then if you are fans of rock and metal music, I will have a little, small, little quiz for you here. So uh, Finland is considered to be a country of metal music and there is a small town with population of only 3,000, a bit more than 3,000 inhabitants. And look here and just try to uh, name which city is it. So this is the logo of the city, by the way. Yeah, so it's a metal town. So do you need my help? Okay, actually, it's Lenny. Uh, it's uh, written like Mia Lenny. It's Finnish slang for that region. And Mia, I, I, it means like I hear, I hear Lenny. So the, the metal, the world metal town is called Lenny. And uh, really, the metal music is everywhere, even in the government. Uh, here you can see who, try to figure out who is it. Oh, you can see that. Sorry for that. Yes, <laughs> my fault. <laughs> Some spoiler. Yes, she's a former prime minister of uh, Finland, and you can see how she's how she's dressed up like a, like a rock star or metal metal a, a girl from the metal band. And uh, yes, rock music is everywhere. And uh, if you try, by the way, I can now ask you. We can make a little quiz in our uh, in our chat box. Do you know? Can you mention any? famous Finnish band in the chat box. I can stop sharing. Okay, I will I will help you. Yeah, aha, uh, Lordi are Swedish. Swedish? Or are they? Wait a moment. No. Finnish. Yes, exactly. Yes, Finnish. Also the Rasmus, remember? Do you remember also this? Um, uh, have you ever seen this fifth element with Bruce Willis, etc.? And they've been like women singing, like diva singing, very in a very high voice. It's Tarja Turunen, uh, who is uh, the former uh, uh, vocal uh, of uh, of uh, Nightwish. Yes. 
also him, Apocalyptica, and many, many others. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, now we have the remaining, the very last issues. After that, uh, yes, exactly, Rasmus, yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, the very last issues to discuss, and then we can just stop screen, uh, sharing uh, the screen and also stop stop this live streaming and uh, so that you can talk to us and we can also hear your voices. Uh, so it's about education. Did you know that uh, in Finland has world's best preschool education? So kindergartens in Finland are the world's best. And also it's second world best uh, school system. So yeah, what is so special about uh, kindergartens and schools in Finland? We will talk about it a bit later in our future webinars. But I can tell you that it's not just about the equipment. It's also about uh, how Finnish uh, pedagogy, uh, how Finnish teachers and preschool educators, how they use progressive methods and how they apply them. It's about different approaches they use. And uh, yeah, there is one more thing to discuss is uh, incredible libraries. If you uh, have ever been to Finland and if you would like to visit it, you will probably face, and if, especially if you go to Helsinki, you will see some very special library. Have you, do you recognize it? How is it called? You can write the answer in the, in the chat box. Yeah, it's in Helsinki and it's called Audi Library. And really, in Finnish libraries, you can find everything. There will be free laptops for, your, for you and your kids. Uh, there will be huge screens with games, like educational games. Of course, there will be books. There will be also playgrounds for children and even numerous ones. In Audi library, you can, gosh, you can sue, really. You can come, there will be these kind of uh, machines, and you can sue yourself. So there is no need for you to go to some office and uh, to order to pay the money. You just can come to Audi and do it for free. Also, there are some conference halls. And talking about music and metal music, you can book uh, the room for free and have your to have some rehearsals with your rock music band or with your choir or with so there will be musical instruments there will be everything what you need for your auditions and for your for your rehearsals can you believe that absolutely for free uh do you want to add anything slava or can we go move forward well i think that uh, this amount of services what you can get there it is one of the ways to combat depression because uh, if you keep people busy, if you give them opportunity to do what they like to do, that helps to keep them ha uh, happy, or at least make them happier than they would be otherwise. So this is really a useful project for the country. It's not ju just some entertainment. It's not appeared by random. It, it came for a, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Very good notes, Vyacheslav. Thank you for that. And once you want to travel to Finland, and by the way, here we want to make a little gift for you. So as you have participated in, participated in our webinar, uh, you will not just get discounts for, for these uh, non-free webinars or for our IT courses. Uh, once you come to Finland, it doesn't matter as a tourist or as a uh, as uh, for work or studies, uh, we will meet you at the airport and we'll provide you with necessary information. So now, guys, remember, you participated in the webinars. You get some nice presents for us when you come to Finland. Yes, and talking about traveling to Finland, you can see that uh, uh, if we compare to other countries, Finland on the, is on the ninth position for safest countries for women to travel alone so it's it's a world statistics i think it's a quite a good statistics and uh, really the cr criminal rate is really uh low in finland and uh uh yeah the crimes are quite light let's say like 
stealing bicycles it's more like entertainment for teenagers and there is nothing absolutely like it's it's not about murders or shooting with the guns in the street no nothing like this never happens to finland so yeah it's uh, one of the safest countries to 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 go to uh which is not yeah and it is so safe that some people call it boring like there is nothing what will sh shock you so, so some people even don't like living in such a quiet country yes yes and that is why in our future webinars we would like also to make a special webinar for families with children or for education in finland when you move to finland with your family and if you really think that safety and good education is your priority it's something you you can just get just deal with yeah and also can you believe it uh, medical system in finland is the fifth best in the world uh also we should point out that there are like two main medical like there is a there are like private hospitals and pri there is a private medicine and also there is state medicine but you shouldn't think that uh if you go to the private doctor you will yeah you will pay quite a lot but uh, there are, there is such a social support in finland that uh even those expenses will be covered by the state I and mean, some percentage will be covered and uh yeah so it's for me when i moved to finland uh, firstly I, I would just be very frank to you and uh, frank to you and uh, sincere and uh, uh it's been quite difficult for me when i faced uh, this uh, medical system i thought oh my god it's so like, different because for instance in belarus uh, it's so that you have a high temperature you have a fever and the ambulance comes to you or you have a delivery and uh, the ambulance comes to you i would say it's a bit too much for doctors uh, but here mm, it's different because of fiends uh there is there uh yeah and uh yeah finnish medical system is really different from what you probably have in your countries and home countries uh the ambulance will not come to you if you have a fever you will have to go yourself and uh, or maybe you will have to wait for the doctor's appointment and and it is not so easy to get antibiotics etc but anyway uh things are considered to be to the, one of the healthiest nations and uh, also Finnish medical system is quite a good one and it's different and it takes some time to get used to this and then you just come down you relax and you just enjoy it you realize that not every problem should be uh resolved uh, through there through the doctor sometimes you just need some calm days and you just have to relax and and look flu comes and goes and it's not reason every time to go to the doctor uh anything to add yes so my understanding about finnish medical system is that they're pretty decent uh, at emergency situation like everything what requires immediate action is done very well and once I was uh, uh, visiting uh, Finnish hospital for educational purpose, and they were quite proud that they were one of the fastest in the world to deliver people with heart attack to the hospital. And they have very extensive IT systems that doctor knows about patient while ambulance is driving to the hospital. So they start all preparations to meet the patient. So everything in emergency is done, I would say, much better than everything what could wait. If case can wait, then it will take time. Then they will not rush with investigation. So it takes even some training how to talk to doctor properly so they will recognize your problem. <laughs> it's truly different from other countries yeah we are also planning
yeah also we are planning some future webinars uh, devoted to the medical system in finland how to manage where to go how to write a complaint etc if something went really wrong uh, but it's for the for the future and maybe it will be most probably on the payment basis but we will figure out and of course we need your face feedback uh, for that and the last thing we would like just to mention uh, are the high taxes so make plus uh, if you think that uh, if you think that uh, taxes in Finland are extremely high maybe from your own experience or from some sayings that you heard and minus if you don't think so it will be interesting to have a look what you think about it so we need your feedback plus if the taxes are really high or minus if you don't think that they're really so high okay plus hmm well uh, we will we will uh, we will make one webinar uh, devoted to the taxation system explaining how to manage with tax tax cards and how to manage with taxes and some nice things for entrepreneurs but taxes are not high really if you look at the world statistics uh finland is not on the it's 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 yes it's uh, according to some statistics it's in uh, in the top 5 sometimes it's in top 10 but it's not the first or second or even the third country for the taxes and then uh, for the next webinar we will explain you why and it's almost the same especially once you become an entrepreneur once you become uh, an uh, uh, um, a owner of the business you will see that it's not that bad yes and uh, I would like to thank you for attending our webinar and for your attention. You can follow us. Uh, I will. I will just share some contact details with you. After that, we can just. I can uh, turn off uh, the the video transmission, and then we can just talk to you, and you can ask some questions to us. Uh, and uh, here are some of our contacts. Uh, and here you can find us here how our website looks like. You can also find us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram. I uh, just write shell code or shell code U -U 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 and then you will get a success. So I will uh, I will I will just uh, stop the screening and there will be a couple of polls, but I think we will we can just yeah, do it without any aims. Uh -huh. Recording. Stop.